As most of you know by now, one of the biggest issues that has been plaguing Warpath for the past two plus years has been the Theater of Conquest matchmaking. I've recently been taking a look at some of the data across Warpath, and we all knew it was a problem in terms of the power gap disparity between a couple of the top alliances and then pretty much everybody else, and we've got a problem, and we're going to talk about it. Welcome back guys. I hope you guys are all doing well and I have a lot of information for you guys today and we have a lot to unpack in regard to the power gap and the power disparity in Warpath. But before we get going with that, if you guys enjoy the videos on the channel, if you guys get value out of the videos and if you guys agree with what I am about to say in this video, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you were not already. Both of those help the channel out tremendously. And also on the front end here, all of this information that you guys are going to see that I am going to put on screen here in just a minute is all thanks to Alex Brum. Many of you guys know Alex. He is one of the OGs in Warpath. He is the man. He is my right hand. So thank you, Alex, for sharing this information with me and giving me permission to share it with all of you guys. So here is the list of the top alliances and their overall power and the average power per member within those alliances in the battlegrounds they are anticipated to be a part of. Again, thank you to Alex Brum for sharing all of this information and for putting the time in to find all of this information out because we all know that there is a problem but without guys like Alex taking the time to do things like this and compile all of this information we wouldn't know just really kind of how bad the problem is. Also one more thing to kind of add not that you guys would have thought otherwise but this is just I'm strictly talking about the hard numbers and data here that we have got this is not an insult or a bash or anything of that sort to any of the alliances that we are going to talk about. This is just a general game conversation with the data that we've got here. So the first thing that stands out to me, and I'm sure it stands out to you guys too, is the massive drop off from the top three teams to the, to the fourth and beyond teams. So we've got AVE, which is the number one strongest overall alliance. They are in server 30. They come in at 101.5 billion power. They've got an average member power of 398 million. The second alliance on the list is going to be S21. They have 100 billion power as an alliance. Their average member power is 392 million. The third alliance is going to be FWZ in server 36. They come in with 92 2.1 billion power with an average player power of 361 million. So you guys can already start to see the big drop off between number one and number three. Number one AVE has got 101.5, FWZ 92.1 billion power. So you're talking about almost a 10 billion power gap and a deficit between just number one and number three. Now let's talk about number four, which is going to be server 40. They come in with 79.2 billion power with an average player power of 310 million. We're talking from number one AVE to number four S40. We're talking about basically a 20 billion power deficit, slightly more, but we're going to round it off for simple math and call it 20 billion power. That is stupid that the first place team and the fourth placed team have that big of a gap. That is a problem. And if you guys look, just going down the list, we're not, you guys can see it on screen, so I'm not going to go through each individual alliance here, but you guys can see from number, uh, the, the fourth place team here, S40, I mean, we don't even get down, I mean, what is that? That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So by the time we get out of the top nine teams were less than 40 billion power. That's mind blowing. That's a freaking problem is what that is. That's a massive problem. You've almost got a 50 billion power gap between number one and we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost a 50 billion power deficit between the number one team and the number seven team. Like if we really let that sink in for a minute, guys, that's a problem. I mean, the number seven team has an average player power of 200 
and 23 million. How do you expect that team to compete with this team in the number one spot when they've got a 50 billion, almost a 50 billion power deficit and almost a 200 million per player power deficit? That's incredible. I mean, truly incredible. So now what's starting to happen and I'm already starting to see it. I, I know everybody else is for the most part too. I'm in server 42 and we had a big, huge influx of migrations coming into this server over the past couple of months. And server 42 as a whole is incredibly strong. But we're broke into a bunch of smaller teams just to stay gold. We originally were looking at the option of coming together to potentially qualify for the Paramount Cup, but we are going to stay apart and we are all going to compete in gold because when you are talking about that lopsided of a power gap, it's virtually impossible to compete. And when you can't compete, it's not fun. And when you have basically no, like no real legitimate chance of winning anything unless you're given something. And I'm not talking about us in particular or anybody in particular. I'm just talking about in a general sense here, when you've got one team or two teams calling the shots essentially for everybody else in the game or at least all of their allies and their allies at the very best are going to be their support teams they're not going to actually be the big dogs i mean people don't really have a lot of motivation right and there there's a problem and i know the developers are trying their best to solve the problem and the migration restrictions are definitely helping for sure however it's not clearly enough and so i have i've thought of a idea or a suggestion or a solution that could potentially fix this problem and now many of you guys specifically the ones of you guys watching this in the top three teams are going to disagree with this or at least you're not going to like this suggestion but as far as i can tell and from all of the suggestions i've gotten from you guys and the conversations i've had with people and the things i've been able to think of this seems like it would be the most guarantee surefire way to break up those top teams. And I, I, I promise you guys, please, please, please believe me when I say I promise you guys, I'm not hating on the top teams. I'm all about having top teams. The problem is, is there's not enough top teams for it to be competitive at the highest level for not only the weaker teams, it's not enough to keep the game fun and engaging for the top teams. Because when you just steamroll everybody, nobody's going to fight you. And then all you're doing at that point are you're just showing up to get free rewards. And that's great and good, but that's only continuing to feed the monster. That's not solving the problem. So here is my suggestion to solve this problem. Every single one of those top teams, I, I have been of the belief for a long time, really up until now, for simplicity's sake, up until now, I've been of the belief that the migration restrictions were going to slowly start to fix the game, and I, I really did think it was doing that. I really did believe that, and I, I still do to a degree. I think it has helped a lot, probably more than I think most of us realize that it's helped, so I don't think it's a bad thing, but it's not enough. So here's what needs to be done, and this is going to be the most surefire way that I can possibly think of to actually solve this problem, not to band-aid the problem, but to solve the problem. Keep the current migration restrictions in place and the, the current migration rules. Keep that in place, and heck, if need be, tighten them down a little bit more. But what needs to happen, and again, I know I'm going to get some hate from some players on the top teams, but it's not personal and it is not coming from a place of, you know, I dislike top teams. I want there to be top teams, but I want there to be balance and fun for everybody because the upcoming Paramount Cup is literally less than two months away and there's not even enough teams to actually make it a competitive Paramount Cup, which is supposed to be the biggest premier event in Warpath that happens just a couple of times a year, and it's supposed to be theoretically the most, the, the all of the top teams, and it's supposed to be somewhat equally balanced to create crazy fighting and a lot of fun, and that is not going to happen, at least as the way it stands right now making this video. The upcoming Paramount Cup is probably going to suck. It is going to be boring, and it is going to be boring for everybody participating in it and watching it and that is where the problem is at not that there can't be you know good strong teams but there needs to be a lot of good strong teams to create balance and to create diversity in terms of different theater like each theater of conquest event 
part of the fun of the game is to be able to compete against different alliances sometimes, right? Like you're going to run into the same teams sometimes for sure, or maybe a lot of times, but you want some kind of diversity to play against different teams and different people to, cr to keep the game fresh and fun and to interact with new people, meet new people, whatever, right? And right now we don't, we don't have that. So enough ranting. What is the solution to the problem? Here is my suggestion to actually solve the problem. And I don't know if anybody's going to listen to this or not, but this would solve the problem in my opinion. For every Theater of Conquest event moving forward, all of those top teams can't be placed into a Theater of Conquest event. They're just going to have to have a match not found and everybody else will compete. And then if you do that enough times, all of those players will start to disperse. That's what needs to take place if we're going to create balance, including the new migration restrictions. Hold those in place, tighten them down if we need to, need to like I said, and then make these top teams not able to find any matches because the power gap is just too big to create a balance and competitive battlefield. Because like I said, all you're doing is feeding the beast if you let these teams continue to compete because you're going to make, you're going to give them, put them into Theater of Conquest events. They're going to have a free win, tons of free rewards, and then all of those guys are going to continue to get stronger, which then creates a, a bigger gap, right? So what's going to happen is if we give them match not found enough times, players are going to get bored, right? And then they're going to start to migrate to different servers to be able to play actual Theater of Conquest events. But while they are sitting there with matches not found, all of the other players in the smaller alliances and servers are going to be playing and getting the rewards and building up. And that will hopefully close the gap even more. I know that is a really harsh suggestion, but... If we want to solve the problem, something, something has got to be done because it's just not working. And now there is a big part of this that is not the developer's fault. There is a big part of this that is the player base fault. That is our fault as a community because so many people chase the next best thing. They flood into one or two or three servers like we see. And then everybody just sits around like, why isn't it fun? Why can't I find any fights? Well, why do you think? Why do you think you have to, at some point, we all have to look at ourselves in the mirror and be like, okay, am I part of the problem? Yes, I am. No, I am not. And if you are looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, you know what? Yep. I just migrated here because they're really strong and I want a bunch of free gifts. But then I also complain that I can't get any match, uh, any fair fights. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of a, you know, hypocritical stance to take. Right. And I promise I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to be honest. We all have to kind of take a look at the mirror sometimes and do a little self-reflection and, you know if you're part of the problem or not. I'm not calling any individual out here at all, but we have to solve the problem because it sucks for both sides, right? All of the weaker teams and the stronger teams. It sucks for everybody. We have to solve the problem. And from everything, like I said, that I've heard and I've seen and I've thought of, basically stopping these guys from going into Theater of Conquest events and just keep kick them out, uh, keep kicking them out and, and not letting them find a match until they start to, you know, break up. And I mean, even if they don't even want to leave servers, just split into multiple alliances within your server. Just something, right? Break up the power. And until they do that, they're just not going to find a match in the Theater of Conquest events. So they're not getting free rewards. Everybody else is. Everybody else is growing. And hopefully that will close that gap. Again, while harsh, that is my suggestion. I would love to know what you guys think. If you guys do have any other alternative suggestions that you guys actually think would solve the problem. I would love to hear those in the comments. Again, no hate in this video, literally whatsoever, but just trying to look at it from a neutral objective standpoint here and what can we do as a community to solve this problem once and for all and to make this game fun the way it was intended. And if you guys have made it this far into the video, if you guys have access to Discord and are not already in our community Discord server, the link to that is going to be in the description of the video. Feel free to click on that link. It'll take you right into the community Discord server. If you would like to join that and continue this conversation over there, we would love to have you. Thanks for hanging out with me on the video today, guys, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.